Ezra chapter 5. Then the prophet Haggai, it's the first time that shows up, the prophet and Zechariah, the son of Iddo. Now those are the prophets of the book of Haggai and Zechariah. And their subjects is what we're talking about now, rebuilding that temple. Zechariah will give us more pro weird prophecies to, to read and study. But Haggai is about to stop it. Remember in chapter 4, they came with a letter and said, Stop, don't do, you can't build no more. Haggai shows up and says, What are you guys doing? They find the land, the priests are out working in the fields, but no one's building the temple. Chapter 5, we're going back to work. Prophesied unto the Jews that were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the Lord of Israel, even unto them. So, here are prophets that God sent and they're going to listen to them. This hasn't happened before. They didn't listen to Jeremiah. Then rose up Zerubbabel, the son of Shatio, and Jeshua, again, that's the high priest, Joshua. And you'll find him in, I believe it's Haggai. Uh, the son of Zodak, and began to build the house of God, which is at Jerusalem. And with them were the prophets of God helping, that's the first time that word show, shows up, helping them. So not only do we have the, the prophet Haggai and, and Zechariah, they got their books, they're preaching to Israel, and let's get right, let's build that temple. They are putting their hands into it too. And those when there is a building going up, it is the people and the leadership doing the building. We already looked at chapter 4, they're not hiring any outside contractors. They tried, but they said, no, you're not going to be with us. At the same time came them Tatnai, governor on this side of the river, which would be Euphrates, Shezer Bonanzai, and their companions, and said unto them, now these are the enemy, who has commanded you to build this house and to make up this wall? Then said we unto them after this manner. This is how we answered them. What are the names of the men that make this building? Okay, who, who are the workmen? We want to know who the construction people are. We want their name. If you said that to somebody in life, I want your name. I want to know who your name is. You find it in the Bible. They're trying to stop the work again. But the eye of their God was upon the elders of Jews, that they could not cause them to cease. Till the matter came to Dyrus, and then they returned answer by letter concerning the matter. So it's over it's God's way over the law. The law was stop. God sent two prophets and said, get back to work. And this is the same thing with Peter and John. We demand you not to preach the name of Jesus. Peter says we ought to obey God over man. And that's a fine line. Romans 13, and Peter writes, says we are to obey the government. That is a Bible principle. But when we are told to go in all the world and preach the gospel, and they say don't do it, well, you got to obey God, and then you got to take the consequences. A very fine line. So the copy of the letter, there's copies that Tat and I governed on this side of the river, again Euphrates, governor uh, Tat and I, the governor on this side of the river, and Shether Bunzanai and his companions in Afar Sakhi, which were on this side of the river, Euphrates, sent to, to Dyrus the king. All right, here's another letter. Chapter four, we see in the letter, and the return of the letter, stop. Chapter 5, here comes another letter. All right, here it is. And then the adversaries against the Jew. They sent a letter unto him, where it was written thus. Okay, here's the letter. Unto Dyrus the king, all peace. Now, back here real quick. Uh, the letter in chapter 4 was to Arzerchi. This one's to Dyrus. Be it known unto the king. That we went into the province of Judea. That's the only time that word shows up. That's spelling that way. Judea. 
to the house of the great God. <laughs> well, look at what these heathen have done, these, these adversaries in their letter. Great God, capital G. That's what they're mad at. We serve a great God. We, their gods are put down by our God. Which is builded with great stone. That's a testimony. And timber is laid in the walls. And the, uh, this work goes fast on and prospers in their hands. It's a good testimony. So Jesus said, when he looks at the temple of Islam, hey, all these things are going to be going to be gone. And like, look how great the temple looks. Well, take down this temple in three days and three nights, I'll raise it up. So the Jews are hard at work. Now working fast and all that, I don't know if they're trying to scare the king. It's, you know, you better hurry up, king. It'll be built before you know it. Or is it true? Then asked we those elders and said unto them thus, Who commanded you to build this house and to make up these walls? True. We asked their names also to certify. That means, you know, we want recognition. We want to make it a legal document. That's where it comes from. Certify. Certify thee that we might write the names of the men that were the chief of them. So, when he says we want the names of them, the letter says we want the name of the foreman and the, the, uh, the people in charge. And thus they return us answer. We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth. Great, true. And build the house that was builded these many years ago with a great king of Israel built it and set up Solomon. So far, they're not lying. Remember chapter 4, it was all lies. But after that, our fathers had provoked the God, the God of heaven and with wrath, he gave them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, the Chaldean, who destroyed this house and carried the people away into Babylon. Absolutely true history. And the Jews would say that because it's the truth. But in the first year of Cyrus, Ezra 1.1, the king of Babylon, the same King Cyrus, made a decree to build this house of God. Why are we building it? Why are we back to work? Because Cyrus said to do it. There's a decree. There's a law. And the vessels also of gold and silver of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took out of the temple that was in Jerusalem and brought them into the temple of Babylon. Those did Cyrus the king take out of the temple of Babylon. And they were delivered unto one whose name was Shimshbizer, whom he had made governor. Everything's true. And when they're sending this letter to Cyrus, they, they're thinking the Jews have lied. And if we tell the, the, the true story of what they said, and when they're found to be liars, man, we got them. Because what king would say, go and build that temple? And unto him, take these vessels, go carry them into the temple that's in Jerusalem, and let the house of God be builded in his place. Then came the same Shabnezer and laid the foundation, laid the foundation of the house of God which is in Jerusalem, and since that time, even unto now, has it been in building, yet it is not finished. We're still building, and we're going to keep building. We had a little time that we had to stop. That was that was only real brief. But we're going to build. And how long are we going to build? Until it's finished. Now therefore, if it seemed good to the king, let there be a search made in the king's treasure house, which is there in Babylon, whether it be so, that a decree was made of Cyrus the king to build this house of God at Jerusalem. And let the king... Send his pleasure to us, commanding this matter. This is the story the Jews told us, King. Go check the records. 
and then report back to us that we may stop them because they're liars. I mean, there's not one lie. I can assume that the adversary is like, we caught him, we got him. It can't be true. So we leave off the letters in transit. 